What's up guys, it's Paul from Not Apple Fan here, and I thought I would talk to you a little bit about... I suppose GPUs, die size, and transistor density. Um, a just weird one that I thought I would talk about today uh, is some observations I've noticed about how uh, how scalable and how how GPU companies scale up their GPUs. And I thought it was a, just, just worth a note. This is the 5700 XT. This is AMD's quote unquote mid range graphics card. Um, I would argue that 400 quid for a graphics card is in no way mid range. But here we are in, um, you know, 2019 where uh, a 5700 XT costs 400 quid but what you can uh, what you can see from relative performance and tech power up and I don't think tech power's relative performance scale is very accurate to be honest at all but it can give you a rough ballpark in what you're talking about it finds pretty much what I found with the Radeon 7 is that the Radeon 7 yes absolutely in some scenarios is faster than the 5700 XT but the 5700 XT is faster than Radeon 7 in some scenarios and they kind of cancel each other out what you can see here though is that it is relatively a push right radeon 7 has more stream processors more cuda cores if you if you're one that wants to use the in nvidia nomenclature has more cus or uh you know sms as nvidia calls it it has more transistors but what you can see is performance is relatively the same and they're both working on the seven nanometer process so therefore you can see that there's actually an ipc gain there the ipc gain has basically cancelled out the higher bandwidth of the memory on the, the HBM2 card, which is the Radeon 7, and has also cancelled out the transistor density of the Radeon 7 by bringing much more efficient transistors. And we've seen NVIDIA do this with Maxwell. When NVIDIA launched Maxwell, we've seen that what they did was they basically pushed their transistors. They made they invented these magic transistors that could do magic things. Um, NV AMD now have 20, 20, uh, 2560 uh, SM, oh, sorry, sh shader units, uh, 64 ROPs, 40 compute units, and 40 compute units is pretty much the same as 40 SMs from uh, NVIDIA. You can see here the 20 to 2070 Super wins by 8% in my testing and in other people's testing, it's more like 4%. I would say that's probably more indicative of the difference between the two. Uh, but then you can argue that this card runs a lot quicker, has higher clock speeds. Around 1900 megahertz for this card, 18 to 1900 megahertz. It can be anywhere to 2000, depending on the board partner design, up to 2100. So it's it's all relative. This one tends to have a higher clock speed. So I would say, as far as IPC goes, it's almost in and around where they are. But what you can see through history is you can see the transistor density. If you look at the transistor density, of this card here which is the the 2080 ti the 2080 ti has 18 billion almost well well 18.6 billion transistors right if you look at the 5700 xt the 5700 xt has 10.3 billion transistors and what you can see is that amd is becoming more efficient performance wise than nvidia with its transistors and people tend to think about this number here and this number here, but they don't tend to think about this number here. How many transistors does a, does a, does a RTX 2080 have? The 2080 Super has 13.6 billion transistors. So it has 36% more almost transistors than the 5700 XT and but yet the, the 5700 xt is almost as powerful as it and you can see that in the scaling you can see it's what it's i will look at the 5700 xt 5700 xt it is 22 percent faster now i would say that's that's a lot of horseshit but anyway it's it's in and around 15 percent faster i would say 20 percent. yeah right whatever Right, so let's say 22% faster. Excellent, 22% faster. But it's only got... It's got 30% more CUs. Or 30% more transistors. 30% more transistors is a massive 
a massive thing and what you can see here is that and i love when people go you know well it's this is the ray tracing cores this is you know the tensor cores and all that kind of stuff that take up that area yeah but like that's that's an, in a, an inefficient way use of the die area so the inefficient use of the die area is all that stuff taking up this area um, like if you look at this 545 millimeter squared if you take a number 545 millimeter squared and you minus that minus uh let's say 36 percent you could have had this 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 die basically at 348 millimeter squared giving you the exact same performance of this without ray tracing that's what people will say but this is nvidia's bet this is what nvidia bet on they bet on ray tracing this is how they've done it you know no one's to say that amd are going to put we don't know how amd are going to do their implementation of ray tracing so you can't we can only deal with what we know and what we know is that this is how it's currently how how in nvidia's architecture is inefficient with die area because it's using a lot of die area and a lot of transistors to give you ray tracing and i'm finding this interesting that maybe per transistor count they're probably the same performance here's a Here's a fi an RX fifty eight hundred uh, an RX uh, yeah fifty eight hundred a fifty you know, five eighty RX five eighty. Here's an RX five eighty. You can see the transistor density five uh, five point seven billion for for a mid range car. It's quite impressive, you know. If you look at how much faster uh, the 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 fifty seven hundred XT is, we'll find it here. Uh, it's eighty four percent faster. I would be curious if I said, uh, if I took, um, you know, uh, this 5700 zero, zero, and I plussed um, 84%. Well, that's kind of funny, isn't it? Well, it's almost the same performance, but you just added the more transistors. So what you can see is that transistors tend to almost linearly scale with performance in in this single scenario uh it's it, it, interesting to watch though if you look at 60 the vega 64 the vega 64 has 12.5 billion transistors and what you can see is that in this case it doesn't linearly scale because it has 12.5 bi billion transistors this card however has less transistors than it but it is faster and significantly faster if we look at the vega 64 and we go down where it's 21 percent faster by these numbers now let's just take these numbers as given let's say these are right i don't think the relative performance numbers on tech power up are very right at all but it's 21 percent faster which is interesting to me you know like it has vega eight percent slower than the vega 64 i don't know whether that's true either but like you know this these are the numbers that we've got to go on so we'll go on mi mi60 here's an interesting one 13.23 why is there more transistors in this when it's just a die shrunk vega well it's not a die shrunk vega number one they have to add more uh you know more memory controllers to add to that bigger bandwidth so you get that larger bus you've got you've got two stick you've got four stacks of hbm on either side of the die so it's interesting to see this that they that the transistor count has gone up but what what do we see about the die areas it's 30 30 uh, 331 millimeter squared what was vega 495 how much smaller is that than that well if you take uh 495 and you minus 33 percent i think that'll pretty much bring you down to uh 331 yes yeah, so it's 33 percent however what is the actual difference well in order to find out the actual difference you have to find the difference between the transistors on this one and the transistors on this one in order to find a transistor difference what you've got to do is you've got to basically work it it's easier to do it this way but what i found is that it's about six percent right so it's about six percent so if you take is it six percent let me just check uh, and we times that by uh, sorry we uh, and we plus uh, six percent Um, we're no it's about seven 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 or eight percent I think I just can't remember the numbers I did all this before the video uh, 12.5 plus seven percent yeah it's eight percent all right so it's eight percent larger so you got eight percent so what you've got to do is you've got to take this die area so you take four four nine five and you plus eight percent and you've got uh you know 
534 millimeter squared so that's what that die would be if it had the same amount of transistors as the other die and then what do you do then you go in and you uh minus that by 36 i think percent is what it is and you get 340 uh, 42 which is not right either uh jesus Five thirty-four minus, let's say thirty-seven percent. Close enough. So it's about thirty-seven percent uh, of a die shrink. So that's how much of a die shrink AMD got from going from the fourteen nanometer process to the the um, seven nanometer process. They saved thirty-seven percent, uh, you know, area. And they were able to increase the density a little bit to increase the performance of the chip. That's what they did. They increased the density a little bit while saving die area, massive die area. So this chip is smaller, therefore it's cheaper to produce. And that's why you shrink your node. Because if you shrink your node, you get more chips out of every wafer. If you get more chips out of every wafer, you save money. This is good for making, uh, you know, chips. But how? But why, why is this video relevant, Paul, I ask? Well, I just want to go into NVIDIA's one. Here's the... Here's their big boy, the Quadro RX, RTX 8000. It's basically a Titan V, but with more memory, right? Uh, 754 millimeter squared. If you look at the, tit the Titan XP, it's, uh, you know, essentially the biggest die they could they, that they made for this bad, bad boy. And it's 11.8 uh, billion transistors. Well, how much faster is the, is the 2080 Ti? It's only 17%, but it's about... 30 odd percent larger this is the problem this is the issue with the with the touring cards you know this is why am nvidia will tell you that the price is so high because of this right the price is so high because of ray tracing but other than that nvidia would have you believe that this is the problem you know don't mind this price because essentially all this is a, t a 1080 ti like you can see it's a it's essentially a 1080 ti it's not it's not it's nowhere near seven percent faster it's bullshit but um yeah, so this is a Titan V. This is the largest chip NVIDIA have ever made. 815 millimeter squared, 21 billion transistors. Where, where does it come in, though? It's 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 about the same performance as a 2080 Ti. You know? There you go. There's your Titan V. You know? Titan V. It's funny the Titan V is still probably the fastest uh, gra gaming graphics card NVIDIA have ever made. It's like, you know... It's it's just funny that this this card is years old now and it's it's the fastest card I've ever made twenty one billion transistors but once again it's it's uh over ten percent larger but it's not ten percent faster and this is the issue it's the issue we're seeing fifty seven hundred XT is only 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 ten point three billion transistors two hundred fifty one millimeter squared this is a really efficient really small architecture people are not paying attention to it. they're not seeing the possible scalability of this architecture they're not seeing what they're going to do with it how it's going to scale up this is going to scale up massively well I think because it's got only got ten ten billion transistors there's a lot of area here to grow if you wanted to double this you double this it's only five hundred and two millimeter squared five hundred and fifty two millimeter squared I oh, sorry five hundred and two millimeter squared that's that's a, that's that's a relative large die on a seven nanometer process but it's not next year when when seven nanometer process comes down in price you know and if you look at what they traditionally amd have done this is this is the you know the rx 50 58 the rx 580 and the rx 580 is uh you know uh 232 millimeter squared now vega ended up being larger but we can't we can't the issue here is that you have to look at priorities you have to look at where you are with the 50 with the 5700 x was it 50 the Fi RX 580. Why do you have a problem with names? The RX 580 is that this used GDDR5. So we don't know how big the memory controllers are, how small the memory controllers are, how many you needed. Do we know? You know, you can see die shots, and this this needed, you know, uh, 256 bit bus. That's what it needed. So you know, so there's the memory bandwidth. That's how much memory bandwidth you had. But you the the other guy used used um you know hbm so we don't know how much it needed how much more silicon it needed to get hbm working on the die we just don't know that so this is the problem but you can see that they didn't really double uh the rx 580 to get the vega 64 they nearly did and it's a doubling of transistors if you take uh what is it five seven zero zero uh times two you know you got it's it's more than a doubling of transistors but 
they didn't actually double the stuff that matters to us gamers the stuff we like to read and say oh well this is going to be a fast card they didn't double the cu count you know what's 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 32 what's 36 times 2 it's 72 and it's got 64 compute units it's got 64 ROPs. it's got 20, 258 uh, tmus what's the tmu count on on uh, it's got 144 TMUs, so it's got it's not it's it's not doubled. It's got 32 uh, ROPs, you know that's that's doubled. I think 36 uh, compute units, uh, you know. But it's it's completely like it's not a doubling. 2,304 shaders, not a doubling. Nowhere did they double this, but it's damn near doubling, and that's why it kind of it gets my ire up when people talking about doubling. I uh, you know the RX 5700 XT AMD don't double, but it's interesting to see this. If you look at the Titan V, it's a massive, massive die with massive amount of transistors. But the performance difference, the performance scaling is just not there. It's not getting much faster. And NVIDIA seem to have hit some sort of wall. What wall is that? You say, Paul? Well, it's the it's the process wall. They're on. They're on a set. They've pretty much pushed the the sixteen nanometer process, which is basically the fourteen nanometer process, which is basically the twelve nanometer process. The twelve nanometer process is just sixteen nanometers with a higher reticle limit. That's the difference. There's no difference in performance. There's no difference in scaling. There's no difference in how that works. It's just that this this number here can be higher on, on uh, TSMC's 12 nanometers, custom made for NVIDIA to make massive dies. This was down the roadmap. Let's wait till the mature a AMD, a AMD make new nodes, small dies, that's how they work. NVIDIA make large, large dies on old transistors, uh, so, you know, on old process nodes. That's what they do. That's their modus operandi. That's how they operate their company. So if you look at this and you can see where NVIDIA have gone in the past, if you take the Titan XP and you look at them, how many transistors they've done, they haven't quite got a doubling, but they've got, you know, almost a doubling in, in, in area. And if you look at the shaders, they haven't got anywhere near doubling the shaders. Like they haven't got anywhere near doubling the TMUs. They haven't got anywhere near doubling the ROPs. They've got near. What they've done is they've used that extra die area to put stuff in that's going to sell well in the in the data center and in the in AI markets. That's what they've done. They've taken that area and they knew this was the, their opportunity to do it. Mature node, AMD were nowhere. There was no graphics cards around. There was nothing to compete. So what will we do? We'll take our dies. We'll make them massive. We'll sell the the dregs to gamers. We'll sell the dregs to gamers, and we'll make up a reason for why it has this proprietary hardware. And the proprietary hardware is there for ray tracing. Then they'll jack up the prices to cover to conceal the fact that they had to jack up the, the die area, and they they jack up the prices and they use ray tracing as an excuse. And the excuse is that aimed the the excuse is there because. Nvidia didn't make their node shrink. Nvidia didn't go for a node shrink, and I think they wanted to go for a node shrink this time around. And I think they will go for a node shrink. Obviously, next time they're going to go to seven nanometer. And if you look at the size of dies on seven nanometer, they're more in line with where Nvidia tend to sell their large ones. So if you go, uh, if you look at uh, seven point uh, seven one five, uh, is it seven one five? I think it's seven one five. Where is it? A seven five five four. So seven five four. Seven five four minus thirty seven percent. Remember, uh, it gives you four hundred and seventy five millimeter squared. What was the old Titan XP? Seven four. Sorry, four hundred seventy four millimeters. Four hundred seventy one. It's where Nvidia like to sell their big dies. This is the size they want to sell you, and they want to sell you that for uh, appropriate price. You know what I mean? But this, this is where Nvidia, you know, always target with 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 their kind of their high end Titans and Ti's. They're always four hundred, between four hundred and fifty and five hundred millimeter squared. Well, ever since Maxwell, they kind of got into a groove of where they wanted to sell and what they wanted to sell at the price. And this was the die size they picked, kind of. You know, the eighty class card. If we got up a, if we get up a GTX. An eighty. Uh, it's about three hundred something millimeters. Great. This is see, yeah. They want to sell you small dies, 
So essentially the same amount of silicon that AMD are selling you for 400 quid, they want to sell it to you for, um, you know, 600 quid. It's what they want to do. This is this is the reason why prices are so high. They've gotten away with this stuff. They've gotten away with selling you loads, of le a lot less transistors, it's a lot smaller dies. And if you look at if you look at this as well, right? So this was 1080 Ti. I uh, sorry, 1080 was 27 uh, percent according to Tech Power Up. Uh, slower than a than a 10 than a 1080 Ti. So it's got 10. What's it? Let's see. Um, we'll just use this because it's the same number. So it's got 11.8 uh, billion. So we'll use this. Um, where is it? 1080 Ti. So we'll go to 1080 Ti. We'll go up till we see Titan. Where is it? Titan X Pascal. So it's 24 percent. 1080 Ti. No, I can't. There's no. Uh, there's no. Titan XP, the big P, the little P, whatever. It's called. There's none, none here, so we can't see it. Well, let's say they said it was the same speed as it. So it's 37 percent, right? 37 percent the difference so if you take uh if you take the titan xp and you take 11 11 point eight zero and you minus 37 percent from it you get 707.4 well let's see uh where the how many transistors 7.2 oh we're nearly at the area so this is how nvidia used to scale nvidia used to scale really well you add more transistors you get more performance this is the way it used to work you add more transistors you add more die area you get more performance but what does actually don't happen this time around is that as you add more shaders not only are you adding stream processors and tmus and rops and stuff like that and actual memory controllers because you're trying to make your 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 bat your bus width wider right you're adding more die area you add more transistors to to the thing but what you're also doing what you're doing that is you're adding more RT cores, more tensor cores, and by adding more of them, the, the, the problem nearly gets out of hand, it gets larger, the die sizes get larger, they get out of hand, and as you're adding another one more SM has a certain amount of T, uh, uh, sorry, every SM is just larger, basically. So before your SMs were smaller, now they're larger. Um, you know, and what's happened is, or even the SMs might be the same size, uh, you know, but because before these SMs were uh, 24, they were um, they were 128 uh, SMs big. And you see, so it's 128, uh, sorry, shaders, shader units big. And the, the, the SMs were released. So you can see, look, there's only 20 SMs in this card. It's the same, same, it's the same amount of shaders as the, the 2070 uh, Super. Exact same amount, but it's got only 20 SMs. Why is that? Because they had more shaders per SM previously. Yeah. Now they've got, you know, they've got, they've gone AMD's way. They've got 64 shaders per SM. Yeah. Look, 60, 48, take 48, three set, three zero seven two divided by 64. Oh no, divided by, sorry, uh, yeah, both divided by 64 should give you 48. 48, there you go. It's got 64 SMs, but they've also got RT cores. But the issue is, the problem is, and I'm going to get paint out to do my lovely drawings. If you look at an SM now, an SM is like this, right? And what you've got on one side is you've got your 64 shaders, but also you've got your 64 inch shaders. So you've got 64 inch shaders and you've got 65 standard rasterized shaders. So this is for doing int, less less uh, accurate calculations, right? You know, FP16 stuff, right? And this is for doing standard stuff, yeah? And then in the middle, you've got your, your tensor cores and then maybe down here, you've got clusters of, of RT cores, right? But the, the RT cores don't take up that large of a space the problem is this part here this is massive this takes up a lot of die area 
once again, inefficient use of die area for a gaming graphics card. It's not the fact that NVIDIA have gone out of their way to make a terrible architecture. What they've gone out of their way to do is take the opportunity that, that, that availed them of AMD being so far behind that they could then move forward and sell big dies you know but they it kind of bit them in the arse if you ask me because the 5700 xt came around and it's kind of a bit of a stormer and this number here would be worrying me as nvidia because they amd are not pushing uh you know uh uh basically um you know sp custom built silicon just to do uh ray tracing they're not pushing that what they're pushing is rasterized performance what they're pushing is 12.3 uh sorry 10.3 billion transistors of sheer raw gaming performance and it's taking 13 billion uh you know um 13 billion transistors from nvidia to do to to to, to match this performance 13 billion transistors that's that's an inefficient use of space that's going to be inefficient in the long run and you can say what you want about them being rt cores and tensor cores and and you know in shaders whatever you want to do but at the same time amd does uh you know into performance at the same time as it does floating point performance already they've got it they've got aces they've got asynchronous you and a command processor that shares out the workload and does it all itself nvidia don't have that you know uh Nv amd have have on level you know on board on die command units that actually sort out the workload nvidia does that does that in the driver so this is the issue this is the problem you know that the, the, this this die is tiny this die, this amount of transistors is massive yeah and um nvidia might be able to get to this density nvidia might be able to add you know might, might be able to shrink down to so if we took something like if we took uh what let's take something that we can get as close to so here's 544 uh 545 millimeter squared 13 billion transistors okay 13 billion transistors 545 millimeter squared so we take 513 uh so if we take this and we've already agreed that's 37 percent of a die shrink so uh five five four five right uh minus let's say 37 percent what are we getting down there we're getting down to 343 millimeters squared it's still quite large on seven nanometer that's expensive and what do nvidia like to sell you at that price they like to sell you high-end performance so what are you going to get next time around nvidia are going to be forced to sell this card at um still on seven nanometer on a seven nanometer process they might be forced to sell this card at five or six hundred quid right but this is a 2080 super you know, we, we, we haven't gotten any, any performance increase, realistically. It's probably just going to be 500 quid now. So the NVIDIA paint themselves into a picture where the, the margin for them is selling small dies. Look, look, I'll show you. Here's a 1080. That's what they like to set. That's the size they like their 1080s to be. That's the size they like their 80 cards to be. This is the size of Touring on 7 nanometer. Now, how are they going to sell that for less? You know? It's an inefficient use of die size, as I said before. This is the problem. This is the conundrum that NVIDIA face. And I can't see a way to rectify it. Now, I could be all wrong and AMD could bring out some, uh, you know, hardware level ray tracing that, that involves an actual encore piece of silicon that might dramatically increase the way in AMD's shaders uh, do work. But we've seen that AMD shaders have already had their rejig. AMD shaders have already had the complete redesign so amd shaders are not going to change for a while amd shaders are probably going to remain like this for four or five years all they're going to do is scale up this architecture so what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to have maybe have something with 3500 you're going to have something maybe with with 4096 might even get something with 5000 i don't know but you're going to see these numbers increase while obviously this number increases yeah but in v AMD, if you, AMD just double this, they're at, they're already at Titan V levels of transistors. Yeah, and we've seen that Titan V is only thirty is only Titan V is only uh, what thirty something percent faster than a ten eighty Ti, and a ten eighty Ti has eleven billion transistors, so it's twice the size of the ten eighty Ti. 
while having only 33 percent more uh, you know while having only 33 percent more um performance for that for that cost of of having that extra silicon it's nearly just nearly double the size in 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 wafer like like it's at 800 and something millimeter squared this you know if you look at a a 10 a, where is it uh this is a this is as big this is the full die so 18.6 billion transistors 754 millimeter squared 754 millimeter squared minus 37 percent because we've all agreed 37 percent is the, the, the set 475 millimeter 475 millimeter squared this is this this traditionally would have been around the performance of what we would have got for a 70 class card but oh no oh no it's 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 the size of what they usually sell their 80 class cards for so now what they're stuck they're stuck in this pattern of charging more money and they, so people who think that when they shrink the node they're going to get cheaper cards it's not going to happen because if you look look what, what was what oh what was the 10 1070 uh tech power up right and the only reason why i use tech power up as i said not for the relative performance but for, because they have it all nicely neatly put in a package right here set 379 us dollars launch price or 100 you know 100 percent performance but it's fast as vega 56 7 billion transistors 314 millimeter squared this is the price this is what they usually sold and if you look what was the previous generation card a, a 980 ti oh 980 ti performance uh, at launch these were closer together but 980 ti performance for 379 dollars that's what you got and this is the size of the die this is the size of the area that nvidia want to sell you for 379 dollars so what do nvidia do when all of a sudden their die size is this size at that same performance you know what do they do oh like we've we've given you so next time around what you really should want to expect is you want to expect that the actual 70 class card right so this is the 70 class card what you should expect is this 70 class card should be selling for around four hundred dollars you can see that we're kind of getting that now after a while of you know or rtx not selling that well nvidia kind of not happy with the launches they launched the super class cards to try and boost uh, sales and kind of uh, curb nvidia uh, amd's uh, you know momentum with with 5700 xt and um because they did that you kind of getting that now with the 20 2060 super kind of gives you that performance kind of gives you last generation's flagship nearly it's about 10 percent shy of that but it gives it to you relatively for 400 quid so we're not quite there the 5700 xt kind of gives you that performance really but you're kind of almost there but you're not there yet so it's still expensive for me it's it's it, like the you know the, the 2060 super is is 50 quid to 80 quid too expensive and the re but what do nvidia do next time around because remember seven nanometer costs more than 14 nanometer what do they do this is why they haven't gone to seven nanometer yet this is the problem this is the conundrum look at the ch look at the size difference like that's 30 odd percent difference you know minus 35 percent yeah, it's nearly 35% difference. You know, 475 millimeter squared is a big die to be selling for 400 quid on the seven nanometer process. It's not gonna happen. This card's gonna be 600 again. You're not gonna see these, like I, the things I see in my comments, can't wait till Nvidia go to seven nanometer. This is gonna get me, you know, we're gonna get back on track with prices. We're not gonna get back on track with prices. Nvidia have profit margin. They have to make a profit margin to, to actually function as a company. And they have a specific profit margin that they told their shareholders, shareholders they'll get. And this is the issue. So like when you're talking about Nvidia and how Nvidia are gonna sell graphics cards in the future, you're looking at an Nvidia that's kind of painted themselves into a box where they have to make large dies or they have to take a decision to put a price on ray tracing. If they put a price on ray tracing, granted ray tracing cards will be over here, non ray tracing cards will be over here and there'll be a different price for both. And that's a way to move away from it, I suppose. But other than that, I, I, Nvidia are all in on ray tracing. This is their, 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 you know, this is their swan song. This is them saying, right, we're in on ray tracing. This is how you're going to do it. This is our implementation of it. This is what kind of hardware we're going to use to get us to ray tracing. This is how I'm going to get you there. And with that, you're looking at it and you're like, hmm, 
is that a you know is does that work but for me when you look at how ray tracing is going to be implemented in the future it's going to be on consoles that's where it's going to drive it that's the major driving force behind where real-time ray tracing is going to happen it's going to be happening on the consoles and then therefore ported onto pc so i would have believed that whatever amd's implementation is is going to be uh the one that becomes ubiquitous and it's if I, for me that was a mistake for Nvidia to go down the route of let's increase our die size, you know, but it, it, Nvidia don't care about you. Nvidia want to sell all these cards to Pixar and to you know all of these guys who just render out scenes all day. That's what they wanted. That's what that's what that's that dedicated hardware is there for. And the you know the the end cores are just there for 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 data center. Like that's just massive number crunching power, adding it's doubling the you know the the floating point operate it's doubling it uh if you look at it at, you know fp16 fp16 just essentially doubles your your compute workload as long as you're not willing to be that precise so uh, a, a, a 10 teraflop card now becomes a 20 teraflop card because it can you can just not calculate to the nearest you know whatever it, it just it, it, it increases the amount of work you can get through in this a set amount of time by two so that's the reason why they did that it doesn't really do much in games at the moment it will in the future, I would imagine. But right now, it doesn't. There's like games like Far Cry and stuff that have special implementations for rendering the water and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, other than that, it doesn't do much. And you're using an awful lot of die area to get you there. And that's the primary driver behind the die area. Like people want to say it's the RT cores and the tensor cores. It's somewhat. But the largest proportion of the increase in the size of the SM was 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 the, was was. You've got the same amount, of, the, the SMs take up about the same amount of space, but they have less ga gaming shaders in them, if you know what I mean. So, the SM before had 128 FP32 cores. Now it has 64 FP32 cores and 64 uh, int cores. But the like that's the, the, the problem. You know, so they've got lots more shaders, but the shaders have half the amount of SMs. And I showed you that. Oh, sorry, the, 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 the SMs have half the amount of shaders, the, the proper shaders that we're used to seeing for gaming shaders. Uh, so I can't see NVIDIA getting away out of this. Um, I can see NVIDIA, you know, because NVIDIA is a marketing giant and people just buy NVIDIA no matter what. I can see NVIDIA continuing to sell graphics cards quite well. And you can see that stock prices resurged over the last while because of their strong, you know, release of, of, of you know, product. They're selling a lot more product. But also you have to take into account that are they selling a lot more units or are they just selling more because they're, they're more expensive, you know people bought a, a six a six hundred dollar um 70 class card you know so did they sell more uh 2070s than they sold 1070s i doubt it but then, even if they sold 60 or 70 percent they're probably making the same amount of money because of that fact because the card costs more money and people like to say the die area is probably costing them more to manufacture. It's not. The the process is so mature now. The the error rates are so low now. The yield coming back is so high now that you're not cutting down as many dies. And you're like if you look at the stack and how Nvidia stacked their cards, the reason why a lot of people wonder why does Nvidia have so many cards? Well, the reason why they have so many cards is because they're trying to get a a, re, a use for every piece of silicon that they get back. That doesn't work fully. That's what. That's the reason why they've got so many cards. You know, is to is to get back as much money as they can, and they do that. You know, some of their cards might be lost leaders. Genuinely, some of the lower cards might make no money, but the fact of the matter is that on the high end stuff, they're making massive margin. On the next end, they're making even more margin. This can happen in a, a company. But their their total, ma you know, margin that they have to have, that their margins that they tell their shareholders is sixty five percent. Uh, Nvidia, a, 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 AMD is forty five percent at the moment. So when you think of that as where it is, yeah, I just I, I thought I haven't done a deep dive into into uh, architectures in a while and die sizes and areas. So I thought I'd try, try and bring a video today that talked about all that uh, in a in a way that was more concise than most of my videos. Cause I tried to show uh, all of the different points, um, but. The fundamental takeaway from this video, just before I wrap it up, is that uh, when 
AMD make a bigger die this time around. More of those shaders will be dedicated to gaming. And more of those, sorry, uh, more of those transistors will be dedicated to gaming than on an NVIDIA card. And the only way for ray tracing to, to for me, the 2080 Ti is the only card I can do ray tracing at the moment. And the only way for, for, for ray tracing to be functionally a thing, in my opinion, to be good enough is when you can play ray tracing on pretty much all resolutions. And a 2080 Ti is the card that gets you there to 1440p. So that's the card that needs to be $250, $300 to me. And it's gonna, the only way to do that is to scale up the amount of S, uh, the amount of RT cores, tensor cores, and you know, all that kind of stuff as well. So just be less efficient in terms of the standard gaming experience that we're used to with die area. Anyway, like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but if you disliked it, tell me why you disliked it, can't fix it if I don't know what I did wrong, and in the comments let me know what you think about uh, NVIDIA and their die sizes and their transistor areas and their transistor density. I, I didn't really research this video a lot, I just kind of have been wanting to do this video for a while, so I just kind of got loaded up all the tabs and thought I'd just talk on the fly. I hope I didn't miss, miss, mix, mix anything up or make mistakes. I, I, I won't look back on this video, I'll just upload it. Uh, I've shot it three or four times now at this age. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's been me. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Sharing is the one that helps me out the most. It's really one that helps me get your message. So if you share me on Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff, uh, yeah, that really helps. By the way, uh, my Discord uh, is down at the moment. I deleted it, but uh, I deleted it because it was a public Discord and it was just everybody joining. And I was getting people complaining to me that somebody, this person said that to me, this person said this to me. Can you deal with this person? Can you talk to this person? Can you, like, this person, one of your mods is being mean, one of your other mods is being mean. Uh, you know, why did you ban this person? Why didn't you ban this person? Couldn't you ban this one? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I just have enough of this shite. I actually took a three week break off Discord because my head was melted. And um, I promised my patrons I'd have a Discord. So I'm just going to make one for my patrons. You can join if you want. You, you can give me money to join. Uh, that's not the point uh, of it. I just think that I, I'm not trying to, oh, please give me money so you can join Discord. No. It's for my existing patrons and for any new patrons that come. It's not, you're not getting access to my Discord as a reward for being a patron. It's just that I can't deal with an open pet Discord anymore. It's too too much hard work. It was a dumpster fire in the beginning. There's just so much shit in it. You know, and I won't ever be somebody to tell somebody to not say something in a public forum. But I think if I make it a Discord server, then it's not a public forum anymore. It's private forum where people pay to be the members of it. So I can at least say, right, well, we can't, you know, we have to keep things more, you know, whatever. And I just thought disc that my Discord was a public forum. But what happens is anything people say, it starts to look like I said it and I did not say that stuff. I did not say anything I do not agree with half the shit said in my Discord, but because it's a Discord and it has not an Apple fan on it, people start to think that I mean that stuff, and that's not a good reflection on me. Uh, and it's not my personal beliefs, and it's not the way, but also my personal beliefs are I'm a big advocate of free speech and people having the ability to say what they want to say, so I never wanted to be somebody policing. So I just thought the easiest way to do was just delete the fucking thing and not have to deal with it and not have to, you know, look after it and not have to babysit it and um yeah like people will say get mods get mods get mods but then i'm telling the mods to, like to get them to police it. i'm telling them what to believe it do you know what i mean i'm telling them what they shouldn't should not allow people to say i just was i was uncomfortable with it i became friends with a couple of mods and then like you just feel like you're fighting with your friends if you're telling them to, to stop people from saying stuff and yeah like, they have their opinion i have my opinion and i just like nah do you know what i'll get rid of this uh discord um but uh, yeah other than that uh, do the like and chomp, comment and subscribe and all that kind of stuff and I'm going to press this button to stop recording I'll talk to you in the next one uh, my new discord will be up this week so I'll just make a new discord this week and it, all my pa patreon members will get it um, thanks to all my patreon members as well uh, sorry about the not having a discord at the moment if you want to uh, you know um, if you still have messages from me in you know whatever if you've sent me private messages whatever you're welcome to add me as a friend and I'll accept I'll talk to you next one. Right, bye, 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 bye.